One of the best tools on the job site, the Toro Dingo. We use it for shuffling boulders so that machine doesn't have to drive back and forth. The key though, the right operator. <laughs> you having fun? All right, get up that hill. All right, Matt, set her down. All the way down, Matt. Keep going. I would tell you this, it's pretty awesome to see it now. Let's just hope it lasts. <laughs> That's cool. Matt, you got to operate the dingo. It seemed like you were getting pretty good at that. What was your favorite part of the day? Dumping out dirt. <laughs> Dumping out dirt. What is up everybody out there? It's Chris at Team Aquascape. As you can see, we've got a beautiful summer day out here in Chicagoland. Just kidding. It's about 34 degrees and we've got snow in the forecast. As you can see it, the weatherman was actually right for once. You can see behind me, we are still on this project out in Palos, this awesome recreational pond that Brian has designed, which you are already familiar with, but we are back. I am out here, so have no fear and excited to get going. We've got a big day ahead of us today. We're gonna start setting some steps, finish out the waterfalls. That is, where is it? Right there behind me and get as far as we can. We're gonna be slopping around. We've got a truck of stone that's gonna be here today. We're gonna get these machines warmed up and start getting going here, okay? As you can see, Juan is fully prepared for the cold weather today. We've got probably, holy crap. Everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascape. I'm back out here today. It's Friday. It is like 75 in November, which is just insane. I'm actually in t-shirt and speedo. Can't show you. You want to, but you can't. <laughs> today we're gonna finish up this waterfall. We've got Corey out here with us, Matt Jimenez, and Corey's buddies from back in the past. Hey, Cody and Mike, what's the name of your company? Aqua Envy. Aqua Envy. So Cody and Mike from Aqua Envy are out here, and the three of them with Corey are down here putting in bib liners. Bib liners are a super important part to me for a pondless system. My biggest pet peeve is when water comes down through a waterfall and just disappears into a bed of gravel. It kind of has this magic look, and where's the water go? I always want to see at least two to three inches of water down in there. So you can see him down here cutting this liner to actually fit over the top of our aqua box. Cody, pull that back for me so I can see the geo grid in the aqua box. Yep. So he's just cutting that to fit right in there. Then he's gonna put a bed of foam right along the edges of all that, put that in there and then put the gravel back. That'll allow this water to pool up. Of course, they'll never get all of it, which then allows the water to then still seep back down into the aqua blocks. We'll probably actually concentrate an area over here by Mike where we can not foam the stuff and really allow that water to penetrate down and through there. And then Corey over here is doing something that's gonna be very difficult. But right now this water comes ripping down through here and then disappeared right into here and I want that water 
to run all the way over into here and disappear back in that area. We'll show you what we're talking about once we get the water running. Matt and I are up here working on the waterfall. So this is our big five foot drop here. We got to get it up to about six and a half feet in here. So I just dug all of this back, got some gravel in here, and then I'm going to set my frame rocks and my next spill stone, which will set my water level for my pond up in there. So hopefully we get this waterfall kind of done today. That's a wrap today. I think today was pretty good. We finished setting some boulders. Matt, you got to operate the dingo. It seemed like you were getting pretty good at that. What was your favorite part of the day? Dumping out dirt. <laughs> Dumping out dirt. Grace, what would you say to all your fans? Are you gonna become a pond builder? No. Uh, do you think your fans like that expression on your face? I don't know. Uh, would you like to smile? <laughs> <laughs> well thank you guys so much for helping me helping your dad today it was fun for you to get outside let's go to the park and finish off the day throwing some balls or exploring okay say goodbye to the rest of team aquascape wave to him say goodbye yeah. cloudy 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 foggy there you go Hey everybody, it's Brian at Team Aquascape. It's Monday, it's our final push out here at our Palos job. We're just loving the way things are coming together. Special shout out to Matthew and Grace Helfrich for helping last Saturday, along with Corey, Matt, and Jack. Big shout out to those guys. This week's the final push. We've got really just the pond left, some grading to do, and some other little loose ends. I'll kind of show you where we're at, and we'll see if we can't get this thing done in the next few days. So here's our big waterfall. You know, this is the one they see from the house. This is the one they see from the pit. This is our infinity edge fall. So we've got all of that set up in there. So we got a couple of little drops. That waterfall right here is super important. It's important for two reasons. It starts at infinity edge, that mystery, but more importantly, set that's the water level of what we want the height of our pond to be back behind it. We've got that set at the correct height. This then comes down through here. We've got the start of an overflow. We need to redo this trench a little bit, but this pond will take on an awful lot of water. We're actually gonna run a downspout to that one all the way over to here. So when it rains, mother nature can actually add water to this thing. But in the event that it takes out too much water, we have to do an overflow that comes from here out to a rain garden back over there. I'll take you up on top, I'll show you the pond. So this is all being fed by this three inch line over here. We gotta get this all cleaned up today and kind of finished up and then we're gonna put a wetland filter in over in this side here. So our goal this week is really get this pond done and the wetland and all that stuff in there. And then we could turn the whole thing on and then the landscapers can come and do their magic. One of the best tools on the job site, the Toro Dingo. We use it for shuffling boulders so that machine doesn't have to drive back and forth. The key though, the right operator. <laughs> you having fun? Yeah. All right, get up that hill. All right, Matt, set her down. All the way down, Matt. Keep going. I would tell you this. It's pretty awesome to see it now. Let's just hope it lasts. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, good morning everybody. It's Brian with Team Aquascape. I am back at our Palos job. Last time I was here, we were working on the Infinity Edge waterfall. I pulled off for a few days to tackle some other small projects. I think I probably built Greg's pond in the meantime. Check that one out. And left Chris, Micho, Jimenez out here to tackle finishing the waterfall. Not the Infinity Edge one, but the big one. And I can't tell you how proud I am. The thing looks incredible. They got a ton of stone placed. They got lights in, they got our urn which i think actually turned out really really awesome and uh, i can't wait to show you guys check this out really quick just kick butt we still got to get that one working some plumbing malfunctions but really cool my battery's about to die but just a quick glimpse of where they're at
thought I lost you for a sec. We're back here. Matt and I have spent the morning just kind of setting what I would call character boulders, accent boulders, and defining a pathway, which I'll take you on in a second. Now we're starting to move over here into this waterfall space, and I wanted to show you something that's pretty important to me, and I actually think helps a lot on all these bigger projects. So this area over here, we've got a big waterfall coming down here, and you can see that the liner goes all the way from there all the way back over into here, which means we're going to catch most of the water, but what I want to do is really try to get 90% of that water coming through here. If all of this is rock, it's going to look really, really bad, but I had to keep the liner back in through here just for weep areas and that kind of stuff. The area Matt's working on here is what we would call plant pocket, and so the plant pocket to me is so, so important rather than another rock because I need green to break this up. Whether that green is going to grow out this way or grow up, something just to break up the monotony of all of these boulders. So instead of actually taking the liner, pulling it back and backfilling all the way up into here, which would have caused a lot of stress on the liner, made it hard to do overlaps and that kind of stuff, we took fabric that sits back here, did a big pocket, the fabric goes all the way down underneath this stuff and then back up there. We have gravel on the bottom, fabric, then more gravel, then fabric, and then more soil. And so now we've got this big well-drained soil area all being contained by the fabric, which will look great with the plant coming here rather than a boulder. So we're gonna do that in a couple spots. We're gonna do it here. I definitely wanna do it in this area. So if I take this away, you can see how we've got this whole area here, which would be effortless to fill with gravel, but it will look so much better filled with terrestrial plants, just some sedums and succulents and stuff. We'll do it again up here, even in the joints right in here, I wanna try to get plants. So any place I think I can get plants, we'll do that fabric burrito type thing. A couple areas there, and there's some areas up on top. My tip for the day, hope, uh, I just hope. <laughs>